Welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Yushu. Today I'm going to talk about real-time deep link analytics for bigger graph using native parallel graph. Uh, first, a little introduction about myself. Um, my background is in database and distributed system. I have a PhD in database from University of California, San Diego. Uh, after graduation, I work at, uh, at uh, Teradata. Uh, needing the big data initiatives. And uh, 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 how many people know about the Teradata? It's really the you know, high-end and, um, enterprise data warehouse uh, leader in the market. Uh, Teradata has been helping bigger customers to solve bigger data problems. But uh, there are many real-world problems that really require many deep level of joins. So even as powerful as Teradata, uh, you cannot meet the performance required for those type of graph problems. Later, I joined uh, Twitter, uh, just like more than six years ago. At that time, Twitter was growing really quickly, and the social graph based analytics was important to the growth and the business, uh, but there was not good uh, graph solution in the market. Twitter built an in-house solution, but uh, it's not distributed, it's in memory, it's not the general purpose. So I look around, there was no really good solution for f high performance, real time graph engine for big data. So TechGraph um, was um, created about five years ago now. And uh, yeah, I think uh, probably, yeah, I think everybody know we, we are not in big data age, the a lot of data come in. Um, but it's not just about, about the big data size, right? It's also more importantly about the complexity of data, how it's connected, right? You have social network, influence network, power grid network, supply chain logistics network, uh, you know, transaction graph. They're all complex um, graphs. Uh, it's not just about the data size, but more importantly, how data connected. And uh, I think. Uh, uh, how many people here have used database, graph database, or familiar with the graph? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, so probably can sk skip this. You know, graph is really good for modeling. You know, for also for discover, predict, explore relationships in graphs, uh, in all kinds of data. But uh, there's something really missing uh, in the current graph and analytic space. For example, uh, according to DB engines. Graph database is the fastest growing category in all of data management. But you know, we have to ask this question why graph database is not as popular as it should be. Uh, I think there's a bigger gap. The gap is that uh, we talk about a bigger data sets, we talk about a complex data structure, but there's one thing that's missing, uh, that's about deep link analytics. Um, so uh, I believe real-time deep link analytics is going to be the next big stage of graph analytics. So first of all, some definitions. Uh, by deep link analytics, I mean the queries that they need to traverse three to 10 plus hops uh, deep into the graph. Because every in additional hop, every additional traversal is going to uh, give you more insights, reveal more uh, information. And also you have to get value from bigger graph. Um, Big graph we define is the billion scale level. You, the graph can be from one billion edges to a trillion, a trillion edges. Uh, and also, if people don't care about the real time, then you know um, you can use other solutions. Maybe they take weeks, right? But uh, some customers don't care. So the real time aspect is also important. Uh, by real time, I'm only talk about human uh, being uh, real time from a few millisecond to a sub second not the Wall Street high frequency type of another second real time system. And also real time has another aspect. We want to work on fresh data. So the system needs to be able to update the system, update the graph uh, immediately. So I think that's very challenging thing to do, but uh, it's really uh, useful in a lot of applications. Um, it's, it's difficult to do because of the multiple aspects I mentioned. Uh, first of all, you have to uh, deal with the B 
big data, you have to be able to scale, right? Some current uh, graph database that only limited to scale up, they can only use one server. So you, if your data is much larger, then you um, out of luck, right? So I did have some customer, they have to compress their data, aggregate their data, they cannot put, uh, you know, all kinds of data they, want, they wish to put in a, in a graph because of one server limitation. So the graph database system has to be able to scale up and also scale out to handle a uh, bigger graph. I, I mentioned the real time. Real time also means you need, you need to uh, ingest data really quickly and also you need to uh, uh, give answers really quickly. Uh, again, a single server solution is not going to be, um, you know, going to be quite useful for, for bigger customers. Uh, even you have distributed the key value uh, storage for your graph solution, but if you have a single point of uh, like a system, like a mid-tier to do the data loading, you know, to the dispatching, you're still not going to scale out, right, for, for your real-time data loading and, uh, and also uh, parallel uh, graph query computation. So the solutions that you still should be the key-value databases, but the loading is just painful. Um, again, I think the most difficult thing is about the deepening, right? So, um, so you want to um, traverse the graph really efficiently and uh, give back, you know, a lot of information. The more steps you can go, the more dots you can connect, the more meaningful query results might be, right? So a lot of databases, they slow down or time, even time out after two hops for bigger graphs, you know. Uh, they, they can, a lot of databases can do, you know, more than three hops only for medium size, small size graph, but if bigger graph, then uh, you're looking at really slow, slow performance and even cannot finish at all. Um, so I want to talk a bit more about the, the importance of deepening. Uh, there are many use cases across the, uh, verticals. For example, uh, if you talk about the financial fraud and the risk control, when the transaction come in, right, you want to go down in your graph like five steps to connect the incoming transaction to known um, bad actors, right? Blacklist, what I says, like a bad transactions, IPs, use IDs, credit cards. So you want to go through your graph a few transactions away. So that typically requires more than five steps, even 10 steps. And uh, uh, for personalized recommendation, yeah, you, if you want to, tr you can traverse more, many steps or could different dimensions, like a purchase pattern, uh, shared interest with similar people, or you know, different categories. So it's all more than three hops in, in a bigger graph. Uh, at the type graph, we are designed from the ground up to solve this real-time deepening uh, challenge. Our solution uh, is what we call the first native parallel graph. Uh, native means we build everything from scratch, optimize it for graph data structure, for graph traversal, for graph computing. Um, uh, parallel means uh, at, a, at a high level, at a logic level, uh, in our system, each vertex, each edge, is not just a unit of storage anymore, but more importantly, it's a unit of computation. Um, at the high level, each vertex, each edge can be associated with some computational function. If your machine has enough CPU cores or CPU thread in theory, we can execute the, the function on each ag, vertex, each edge in parallel to do aggregation, to do filtering, uh, to do um, evidence gathering. So only give back the customer uh, the final result. In other systems, you have to send a, qu a query to get a subgraph. You do the computation in your own application code. So that's really slow in terms of data exchange, in, in terms of computation uh, inside your own application, which is not easy to be uh, parallel. Um, I mentioned that because we uh, control, we actually implement everything from uh, using C++ from scratch. We, we, we were in stealth mode for about five years, keeping our heads down, bu um, building the system. Uh, because we control the, uh, the component from the bottom to, to the top in our whole stack, uh, in our customer typical project, we are see about between two to even more than 10x data compression. Uh, it's not just 
data compression based on you know encoding or dictionary. It's also a compression encoding based on graph data structure. Uh, the, the reduction in data sets not only reduces the CPU, not only reduces the memory usage, but more importantly reduces the CPU cache misses. Because right now, the gap, performance gap between CPU cache and the memory speed is becoming larger and larger. For graph, a lot of access pattern is random. So it's harder to you know, use sequential optimization to improve your performance. So the smaller footprint in memory, the next chance we're going to get the CPU uh, um, cache misses. So um, uh, yeah, S reducing CPU cache misses really helps improve query performance. Um, who use uh, Tiger Graph? Um, we, we started to build everything from scratch using C++, and then over time we build a companion or query language. Uh, we are fortunate to work with some of the number one customers um, in different verticals. For example, Alibaba slash Alipay uh, is the largest e-payment company. Uh, they have more than 100 million daily active users. I think we are running the largest uh, real-time transaction graph in the whole world. Uh, every day, they send more than 2 billion uh, updates to, to, to our graph engine. The graph has more than 100 billion uh, ent entities, close to a trillion edges. And it's only running on 20 machines in a single cluster. They have multiple clusters across the data center, but the, in a single system, it's only uh, 20 machines. And the commodity machines with uh, 192 gigabyte memory or 256 gigabyte memory. Visa is the um, um, number one payment company in the US. We power um, uh, uh, different applications for them. One of them is a the business dependency graph. So you want to have a 360 views about everything happening in the business, starting from end users, business groups, uh, microservices running on different uh, physical of watching servers and also connect to um, routers, connect to um, physical drivers, right? So if anything happens, they, they can rank the application, like a page rank score. Uh, Wish.com is the number one uh, mobile e-commerce company. Uh, they are based in San Francisco. Um, we power their e-commerce product graph. So they have hundreds of millions of products on their pro, uh, platform. Every day they get them, uh, quite a few new medium product coming in, so you need to know uh, which product are similar, which product are duplicate, and you want to class the product, so you, you want to, to do different algorithms, look at all kinds of data uh, to do the best uh, recommendation for, for the pro product and the users. So by using a unified graph model, connecting all kinds of data, they have um, to control all kinds of you know idea algorithms, iterate really quickly. Before Tiger Graph, they have to try ideas really slowly, do their own ETL pipeline, only a, one, a subset of the data, and the performance not not good. And the momentum uh, is also in, in in the Bay Area area. They are the fastest growing number one mobile. Uh, supply chain logistic company. Uh, the, the graph is a kind of a natural world graph, right? So the graph has data warehouses, has uh, cities, has manufacturers, uh, has um, a product also dependency graph. Product dependent on product, dependent finally many steps down uh, raw material, right? So there's a product dependency, there's manufacturer delivery relationship, there's a manufacturer producing product relationship. So uh, also they have a multiple dimensional uh, kind of dependency like uh, uh, time, time dimensional. They put the time dimension also in the graph like by day, a day a vortex is a vortex, a minute is a vortex, a second is a vortex. Also, uh, you know, um, they also have a geography hierarchy in the graph like uh, Seattle is a part of Washington, part of Western, Western region, part of you know, North America, so there are also another di dimension. Um, so the graph is really good to unify and put all kinds of dependency in a single unified data structure, so you can do all kinds of aggregation, real-time query, uh, you know, relationship discovery comparison. Uh, State Grid is the uh, uh, number one largest uh, power grid uh, uh, energy company in the whole world. Actually, they're number two in terms of total revenue. 
in all uh, verticals across uh, in the whole world. Uh, we work with the uh, um, um, department in also in San Jose, in the Bay Area. We power multiple applications. One of them is uh, the um, power grid uh, flow um, management. So uh, it's also interesting, the graph is kind of a natural world, real graph. You have power generators connect to transformers through transmission lines. You know, also you have switches in the middle and then transformers connected to l lower level transformers, finally connected to uh, meters and the users, families, fa uh, factories, factories, right? So it's really, uh, a, a network is graph. The computation uh, is, uh, um, is uh, more like, um, one of the applications is very similar to page rank. You want to estimate your network status, right? There's no mathematical function to tell you the status of each equipment in just one shot. You have to do this estimation, iteration after iteration, uh, using some mathematical formula. And so also you want to do what if analytics. What if this line is down? What if this switch is off? How is it going to affect my security, my, my um, power gener generation plan? So it's real uh, world uh, graph. SoftBank is the uh, number one tiny com, um, company in Japan. Uh, we work with um, uh, power their uh, internal network security applications about how many how people connect to log into machines, what do they do, and you know this type of thing. They have complex VPN control. You know a lot of people. Um, yeah. So that's about the use cases. Uh, now I'm going to talk a little bit more on the technical side of our platform. Uh, this, this slide shows that uh, we can take uh, a lot of different data sources initially to do ET ETL, to load to our system. Uh, we can load the data from um, Amazon S3, from database tables, from CSV, from uh, uh, JSON format. So uh, yeah, we have a, a high level query, uh, high level definition language. You don't need to write a Java or Python. It's SQL like a current language. You do the mapping, then we load them to the database, and now you have a huge graph in, 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 in the system. Then in real time, you can uh, stream your data to the real time update through standard uh, RESTful, RESTful API uh, uh, based on JSON in input format, but also you can, again, define your own uh, uh, loading job. For, for example, you have a really rich line coming with maybe 100 columns. You can define a mapping between uh, this one rich line to different work, vertex edge in the graph. Then automatically the system will take one line and map to and update the graph. And uh, um, we, we run on premises uh, mostly, but we have customer US. They purely run system EC2, they manage the EC2 incidents. Last month we announced the uh, general availability of a cloud offering uh, in Amazon. So we can manage and host the graph solution for our customers. The customer can bring their own data to EC2. They don't need uh, to do the instant download installation and the management of our system. And the query result will be uh, returned also typically in JSON format. So customer can use the uh, uh, REST of API to call a query in our system to get back a result and then integrate the result in the application or do their own visualization. Um, so to, to, in order to uh, be able to do real-time deep link uh, analytics, we really need to achieve some performance data points. So that's the data points that we typically uh, achieve and we share with customers. Um, I mentioned about the 10x data compression. It really depends on the customer data. And, but most importantly, the traversal speed is the key data point we use to estimate our query performance. So per machine per second, we can uh, traverse about 100 million vertex or edges. So if a query need to traverse about 20 million vertex edges to do a recommendation, to do a fraud detection, uh, you are looking at uh, less than 100 millisecond. Uh, 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 loading speed, that's on the Twitter graph. Uh, that has no uh, attributes, so if you have more attributes, that performance uh, will slow down, but uh, we are looking at uh, uh, about one million rows uh, insertion update per second. 
Yeah, so um, one of the reasons we only launched the company last month is that uh, before everything was in C++, the API was not easy to use. It's hard to, uh, to uh, even you know, train customers to do that. So uh, now we launched also last, last month a complete end-to-end -end web browser-based uh, Visual Studio uh, as a Visual SDK. So everything you can do using our text-based uh, SQL-like SDK. Now you can do everything similarly uh, through the web browser. I'm going to show uh, some uh, slides and later. And like I mentioned, uh, uh, Alibaba, we uh, have been in production two years ago. Uh, it's distributed system, C++ based, and, uh, and also for which.com, we have been in production about three years now, starting with one small project, then to a much larger project, to even much larger project. Um, we published some uh, white papers on our website. You can go to um, doc.telegraph.com slash report. You can see uh, more description about what, what, what we mean by native parallel graph, how, how we do that, why, why we are the fast. And uh, also, right now, we only focus on bigger customers. right? So, so we have to provide the enterprise features required to be in production. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we provide the REST API, so customers can uh, easily integrate our system with these applications. We provide the out-of-box system monitoring, alerting to show you your QPS, your memory usage, everything. Uh, we also have out-of-box HA photo tolerance. You can run one machine, multiple machines, one cluster, multiple clusters. It's all configurable. Uh, also, we integrate with other uh, like bigger data systems. Um, we, we can read from Hadoop, Spark, Hive tables. Uh, taking in the initial data set. And uh, also for real time, uh, if a customer have a Kafka, uh, they don't have to you know, post to us separately using REST API, they can, we can just nest into the Kafka queue. Again, uh, I mentioned uh, we do integrations through REST API, so customer, uh, some customer, they build their own in-house visualization um, using our graph visualization library. Uh, just a little bit, uh, a little bit technical. Uh, this really shows our query language. We have complete tutorials, best practice, cheat sheet about this SDK on our website. But it's very similar to what you would do um, in relation database to develop a solution. First, you need to develop a, a graph model, right? Like in database, you need to create the, decide to create how many tables, how many columns. In our system, you decide what vertex you want to create with what kind of attributes, and then you decide what kind of edges you need to connect the vertices, and then just one time thing. Uh, later, in, in real time, dynamically, online, you can also change the graph schema. I, I want to drop this type of vertex. I want to add the new attributes to this vertex tab, to this edge, so you can also do that. Um, then the second step is that uh, if you're not a startup, if a bigger company, typically have a lot of data already. So you need to know the, some historic data into Tiger Graph. So I mentioned you don't need to write Java or Python like, a, like in other systems. So you use this mapping language to define from this column, I want to map to this vertex type. From this column, I'm going to map to the attribute on this edge, some, something like that. Uh, it's really sim simple example here, but uh, our mapping language is very powerful. You can also use where condition to filter out some rows you don't want to, you don't want to know the in, or you can write some user defined function, or we have built-in function to combine combine multiple columns to one attributes in in, in the in the graph data uh, graph instance, or you, know, you have multiple files, each file only contribute some attributes on the vertex on edge, that's also okay. Um, you don't have to combine them using other system. You can all uh, do through this uh, um, nicely designed mapping language. Then the last step is that you have a business question. Then for a business question, you write the uh, query, right? Just like in writing table join query on top of relation database. Our query language is intentionally designed to be very similar to SQL. You see, you have similar keywords like select, from, uh, you know, order by, name it, print. So, but uh, uh, it's kind of you know misleading because in the graph, 
world is a normal table joins. Everything is about the traversal. And uh, everything is also about site-oriented operation. So that's how we have automatic parallelism come, come in. So you, you want to start with some vortex. Uh, could, the, uh, could be a, a set of a single vortex. Could be a set of all vortex in your graph. Then you de describe what's the next step you want to do, what field con condition you want to do on vortex type, edge type, attributes. You can create runtime attributes on the fly, you know, as evidence of fraud, as evidence of accommodation. So uh, you all do this through this SQL language, but the system will automatically compile it to, um, uh, to a RESTful endpoint. So you, when you write this one time, and you invoke as many times as you want using um, through all kinds of programming languages. So this is very similar to stored procedure in relation database, um, but it's more powerful. Uh, right now, it's very similar to SQL, but if you go to the website, you can see if you want, you have a while loop, that's useful for doing page rank type iteration. You have if then else that's really useful for real world uh, uh, business applications, right? So the, it's 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 Turing complete. Uh, you can write anything you want. We compile finally to binary code, and then it become part of the database. So it's really high performance. Uh, that's what we really focus. Um, you can use this query language to do iterative page rank type of application to do uh, collaborative filtering. You know, really like 10 nines, 20 nines, you can solve really tough problems. If you use Java or Python, it might take you weeks, but use GSQL, query language, it might just take you a few hours, literally. Uh, I'm going to show some some uh, use cases later, and you can see uh, more complete examples. Yeah, I, m I mentioned the, um, the advantage of the high-level SDK. Um, I mentioned that uh, it's really flexible. You can have all kinds of data structure. You can have a hash table as attributes, a set, a bag, a tuple as attribute. Uh, I mentioned it's Turing complete because you, you can do for each, case win, while loop. Um, uh, one favorite example is, um, of mine is that uh, if you want to count the number of triangles in a graph, right? For example, I, I called John, John called Smith, Smith called me, that's one triangle. If I want to know, for each person, I want to compute the number of triangles. Uh, I don't know how you're going to write in SQL, in Java, how long it's going to take. But in using this GSQL query language, it's about only eight lines of code. And automatically, it your parallel um, execution inside the big graph. So uh, similarly for community detection, connect component, typically just like a 20 lines of code, 50 lines of code, high level. You can discuss with friends, you know, it's, it's not like a Java, Python, it's hard to read, hard to maintain. I already mentioned for every query, uh, a user writes, we automatically provide a, a corresponding REST API. Then you can call from you know command line or other application. We also have a, a command line like a MySQL type of admin um, interface. You can just run query with some parameters, but you can also call from REST API. Um, I can go through the visualization a little bit uh, uh, quickly. Uh, you can see everything on on the website. You can do a test drive yourself. Uh, I mentioned it's a really uh, a nice tool designed uh, to uh, uh, create, explore, and query big graphs visually and interactively. So you look, look at the left side. Uh, so right now we are in the design schema page. So you through a few clicks, drag and drop, you create a graph model. You, you, you decide what type of vortex you can create, what attributes on each vortex edge. You can delete, save. And then second step, uh, yeah, this is a more complex graph schema example, right? You can zoom in, zoom out, you know, delete. You can talk, discuss with friends. So it's just so much easier uh, than writing DDL, right? Like create a vertex, create an edge. But it's equivalent, but it's just much easier. So for the data mapping, uh, you, you uh, define a mapping first. So you have the graph already. So you have different data sources. You see uh, trip.csv, payment.csv, um, use a device like a phone, IP, you know, .csv. Then you decide, okay, 
Uh, for example, if this is the trip dot CVC, it means I'm going to uh, map some columns from this file to this edge, to this edge, to this edge, or also uh, to this vertex type called trip. Uh, and then you double click on the mapping. It shows you, okay, you des decide from the columns of your input files how you're going to map to the vertex attributes, right? So, uh, then after you after you map the data, then you can run the the mapping job. The data will be loaded in. We'll show you, you know, some stats for the graph. And uh, then now you have a running graph. Um, you can explore the graph without writing any query. We have some built-in uh, capabilities right now. Over time, we're going to add more. For example, uh, right now you can uh, you can see okay uh, you can see you, you you can randomly pick up some vertexes or can search some vertexes, and uh, then you can see okay how these three vertexes are connected. I want to show all passes connecting them, or maybe I just want to show a single shortest pass connecting all of them. So there are a lot of um, capabilities you can do. You can also do some filtering. You can define uh, steps. You can start with one or a set of text to define the step traversal. In first step, I want to only go through this type of edges, reach this type of vertices. The second step, I'm going to do this type of you know, configuration uh, and uh, um, filtering, right? The next step, I only go to product, right? Then you click run, then you don't need to write any query. Um, we we uh, give you back the result and visualize it. Uh, but also you can write queries because any built-in function is not going to solve every possible business problem. So I mentioned the GSQL query language. You can also write the GSQL query language right now through the uh, web browser. Uh, you create a query and then you click around. If the result is a subgraph, not every query result is subgraph, right? Then we only show, show the uh, JSON output, but if the query uh, result is a graph format, then we visualize it. And again, our well, visualization is totally separate from our uh, core engine. Anybody can you know, write another visualization or customer do use our uh, visualization library and enhance and show more tables, different, different other type, types of visualization. Right now, we only do visualization for uh, uh, graphs. So every query you write, we automatically generate this web page for you. We look at the number of parameters, the data type. Then on the left side, we automatically generate the corresponding number of text box, right? Drop down box. So you can type, uh, you can type the values, click around the query. If the result, result is subgraph, then we visualize the result automatically for you. Uh, 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 here are different buttons. You can click, uh, maybe this is a JSON output, this is a log, performance log. So, yeah. And then, based on the result, it's graph, then you can again double click, expand. Uh, you can also save the picture or something. Um, yeah, it's just really nice tool to initially help data scientists, engineers to play with the data, look at the relationships, and also try some queries really quickly. But uh, uh, Again, functionality-wise, it, it's it's similar. It's exactly the equivalent to the text-based SDK. Um, we, we, uh, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of graph use cases. Graph technology is really universal; can be applied to many, many different use cases. I think there's a lot of other other meetings, uh, you know, uh, um, and uh, um, talks about uh, different use cases. So I'm not going to talk in details use cases, but uh, we really focus on bigger graph, real-time graph analytics, which can be applied to financial, anti-money laundering, uh, fraud detection, safety control, uh, supply, supply chain optimization, power grid optimization, e-commerce. So you, you go there, we have videos. Uh, videos is purely based on screenshot of our live demo. We have quite a few live demo running on EC2. One of them has, uh, I think, uh, uh, quite a few billions of vertices and edges. It's about the transaction, uh, transactions, right? So uh, you can go through like 10 steps and still give, get back result in like less than 100 milliseconds. Yeah, so uh, who can, you know, really benefit from a typograph? 
if the user has a lot of data, for example, from a beginning to a training edges, uh, if the user want to have fast loading, not just initial data, fast data loading, but also uh, real-time data update, and also customer really care about uh, fast query, like sub-second query for most type of queries, right? All lab query, you, you're not going to get uh, one second the query, uh, query performance. But for most uh, queries, if it's not traverse more than 100 million vertices or edges, we can get back in less than a second. Uh, we have complete, uh, we have some really nice benchmark. Uh, you can also again go to this, uh, our document, documentation website, check out. Uh, you can run it, duplicate, verify it. Um, so, just as a quick summary, what are the uh, big advantages of a tag graph? Uh, it's all about scale, speed, real time, deep link, analytics, and also ease of use. I talk about the scale, right? So we can easily handle big graphs with hundreds of billions of vertices and edges. I talk about the speed, we can do fast uh, update, we can do sub-second query uh, for huge graph, and also I uh, talked about uh, you know, the really important business use cases which have to use deep link analytics. Deep link means you need to traverse deep in the graph three to 10 plus hops, right? So um, I think a lot of business right now are getting values out of graph analytics but what they are getting right now is only the tip of iceberg of a truly distributed high performance database can provide. And not, not the least important thing is also we have this visual SDK or web browser based SDK to help users to visually and interactively create, note, explore, and query big graphs. This really help customer to snatch down, snatch down the development cycles for months to literally days for our team, we can do running a quick PLC literally hours because we have been, uh, we are really efficient with our, our own language, our system. Customer have data schema ready, business queries ready, uh, requirement ready. We can do a real life PLC really efficient in hours, a day, or a few days. So similarly, for some of our customer, they are using us to, to really boost their data scientists, engine team's productivity. That's huge ad advantages to the business. Uh, a little bit uh, about uh, uh, our company background. Uh, and, and I mentioned we just launched the last month. Uh, we raised uh, $33 million. Uh, it's the second largest funding for graph databases, only after near 4 year. We are headquartered uh, uh, in um, Redwood City in the Bay Area. Uh, we have a small team in Shanghai for local support. We have about, uh, we have more than 30 plus engineers in R&D, half have PhDs, most uh, are from um, database and system companies like uh, Google, Twitter, Oracle, uh, these type of companies. Uh, we are growing, we are hiring, especially we are hiring um, technical sales engineer, senior technical product manager. We also hiring other department and uh, you can check out the positions on our website, uh, yeah, to, 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 we also have a reference bonus program. Just email talent at the um, Thanks everyone for coming to the talk. I encourage you to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. We're going to publish more white papers, more benchmarks. We're going to have more uh, announcement of new features. We keep in doing innovative work uh, inside this space. Uh, hope you guys can uh, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Keep updated. Yeah, I think that's about it. And uh, yeah, I think we have uh, about 10 minutes for Q&A, five minutes for Q&A. Yeah. How, how does the telegraph uh, partition the graph across uh, multiple <laughs> nodes? Yeah, that's really, uh, that's one of the most challenging uh, um, technique uh, problem for graph database. We partition multiple ways. Uh, by default, uh, it's kind of random. It turns out to be work out really well for not for user, use, use cases, but we also can get hint from the graph schema, so we can partition according to vertex type, edge type, attributes, hash functions. Yeah, please. So you mentioned that there are two types of scenarios, right? One is you start with the vertex, and yeah. you do some analysis on that for logging the transactions, you want to figure out what that is transaction. Yeah. But there are also big picture scenarios like uh, 
like, for example, your triangle case. Yeah. Like, right? So do you optimize your native store, the native storage, mm -hmm. for these scenarios, or is it mostly uh, a function of compute and, uh, and threads that you spend up in that case? It's really about the compute, how, how efficient we can compute. So uh, first of all, the query language is exactly the same. The way you write, uh, we call it a point query. You start with one vertex or 100 K vertex. We call it a point query because typically finish in less than one second. Uh, the OLAP query, like a page rank, like community detection, we call it OLAP query. That could have took a second or minutes or even like hours, right? So uh, to, to us, the performance is about the same. We just look at the number of vertex edges we need to traverse divided by 100 million uh, travel speed. That's typically the estimate we give to uh, a project. So, so uh, let me ask a tricky question with this. What I meant to say here is, so uh, you uh, add compression to the storage, right? Yes. So generally, the compression is done in blocks. You have the data and you want to chunk it and you want to compress key chunks, right? So uh, I'm assuming that's the case. So uh, in that case, do you compress your vertices separately or you compress vertices and edges in one block together kind of a thing? Like yeah, that's just really a, a great question. Uh, we first of all we, we run the algorithms, the computation, the traversal, or uh, our native compressed data structure. We don't need to do on compression stuff, and also we are not doing really um, like uh, column store type of uh, compression. Our compression typically comes from uh, uh, encoding and also the ID compression and also based on graph structure, uh, IG list type of com compression. We are next take advantage of the, uh, like look at a huge block of attributes and comp uh, compress them. We are not really getting much big advantage from that. Yeah. Yeah. How does it compare to other platforms like uh, mm -hmm. graph frames, graph X? Graph X, uh, um, I have some slides. Uh, so they, they're offline only. Uh, so you cannot uh, update the system in real time. So and also performance wise for graphics, uh, it is based on joins. It's not a native storage. It's not a native computation. So the performance is really really slow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So for example, uh, I'm not sure I have the slides here. So so for example. Uh, yeah, maybe you, you cannot see this. In the query language, when you go uh, traverse, for example, page rank, right, or any algorithm that need to traverse a mini vertex or edges, you can see I only want to go through this type of vertex, this type of edges. Or, or also, maybe when I go through this edge, I want to do some aggregation of what's the maximum transaction down amount, what's the latest, latest the transaction date, something. So if you don't have this native or parallel computation engine, what do you do? You send the a API call to a key value database or to a subgraph database, you get back the result. You do filtering, you do aggregation, so it's, you're not getting the advantage for parallel. So, but in tag graph, in this query language, you see for this vertex, for this edge, I only go through edges that with this edge type, only go through the edge with this attribute more than this value or you know something like that. Then this traversal, this computation is automatically done in parallel. If I have really a lot of CPU cores, CPU thread, we're going to do this really efficiently. So that's what I mean by parallel computation. So in the old days, we have the C++ API. So X plus like kind of map, kind of this type of, you know, different stages of computation. But now because we have G, uh, SQL, like high level language, we customers don't even know, know this. But, that, but it's like SQL, you, you set oriented, but we just make the set oriented of computation parallel automatically. That's a great question. Last question. Yeah. Ooh, um, the, the use case you have for Alipay was very impressive with 100 billion edges. Yeah. Could you elaborate on what they do with that graph? So two use cases. The first one is the anti-money laundry. So they want to know how money flows from account to account. I send the money like a five, five step away, maybe come back to account that we did some transaction before. It's not my account, right? So the second thing is the case management. Case management means um, uh, they, they, they have a huge team of you know, people monitoring everything, put a mark, okay, this is by the IP, this is by the credit card, this is by the you know, phone number. So any, any transaction coming in, you want to know in a few steps. 
how many bad actors connected through what kind of passes, then can give different the ranking. Maybe you know, okay, this this is bad transaction using using this phone number, this IMEI. Now you think this is bad, I want to mark it as bad 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 actor. Then over time you over time you can expand your knowledge about who are the blacklist entities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.